So what happens is that we create some uh, icons, we call them tags, and they have a, like a, a signal within them. Uh, and when you stare at that, your eye responds to it in a particular way. The, the way in which that eye response occurs is a signal that we pick up on the visual cortex of the brain at the back of the brain. So the sensor is looking for the signals we create here that come through the eyeball, through the brain, and then onto the visual cortex. Once we've got it there as a signal, we can grab that, we understand what that signal looks like, and we can turn that into a command for whatever we're trying to control. So this device is all about providing control of other devices that the soldier might carry. If you think about what a soldier does, most of his time he wants his hands-on weapon. Anytime I've got to take my hands off the weapon to do something, I may, may be vulnerable. So by having this device, it allows him to be able in control of things whilst he's still got his hands on the weapon. gone through the training, the organisation had a much better understanding of the individual and how the brain and body communicates. And from a soldier's well-being and welfare, that's just as important as they're optimising their performance. So how this worked for us is that they developed the technology and I used all of the techniques that I've learned through the training and through the coaching to use the technology to show how the human can improve their performance and reduce their cognitive burden to use the technology better. So when you use uh, brain-computer interface technology, so when you use brain sensors, you have to train or learn uh, how the device works, but more importantly, it needs to learn about you and how you work. So it needs to learn your thoughts. And what we realized very quickly was that we can do that on our own, uh, but um, getting a specialist in that knows about how to train the brain and rewire the brain would give us an edge with regards to uh, getting things together more quickly, but more importantly, more consistently. So have to be, have those consistent thoughts and consistent way of using the device being specialist training, and that's what Ellen brings to the party. How does it work? Well, the headset lives on the back of the head, and then there's some icons which appear in front of your eyes. So yeah, it's a bit of a retrospective uh, position. So uh, we said, okay, well, there must be another way of doing this. Look, which is uh, this one. So you can see that that zoomed in, so he's doing pretty good. Can everyone see that? Fantastic. And then if you stare at the counterclockwise one, we may be at, there you go. So he's rotating the drone counterclockwise by thought. Okay, and if you, if you want, you can try the other one and try the counterclockwise one. There you go. That spins around the other way. This is me known by thought. And if you stare at this one, Brett, on the right-hand side. So there's multiple places where we think this technology can be applied. Uh, perhaps uh, in, I don't know, uh, driving or commanding uh, unmanned uh, ground vehicles or unmanned uh, naval vessels perhaps um, providing uh, menu selection and control within a, a control room environment, maybe in a nuclear power station, all those kind of things are perhaps in the, in, in the bailiwick of this technology.
So, um, and I'm not a politician. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an engineer. I'm a technologist. So, so this is this, this is my view. You know, th there has been war for for as, as long as we as long as mankind's been around, and and I don't make the decision to go to war. My my job is to ensure that our guys have the best chance of doing the job they're being paid to do, uh, and and that's that's all we can do. The politicians make the decisions. All we do is, is, is effectively enable them to give them the best chance of succeeding in their mission.